Here we are in Blender 3.0. I've got a simple scene started. I just opened a new file and set up some lights. And now let's explore GeoShapes. So I'm just gonna open my preferences, make sure my file path is set correctly for my asset library. And then I'm making sure that the GeoShapes file is in this directory right here. And then once it is, I'm just gonna make sure that the asset library is pointed to the user library. And then you can see all the objects here. So you can see that this is broken up by category and we're just gonna explore some of them as we poke around. You can see that I have a shape right here on the main stage right now. So let's just kind of dig into that. So if we go over to the modifiers panel on the right hand side, we're gonna see the cone pyramid. We got the controls within ge geometry nodes and we have a bevel applied. Someday, hopefully soon, uh, geometry nodes will be adding bevels so we can control it all within one panel. But for now, we're just gonna have to make do. So we can see, we can play around with this a little bit. We can see that we can set the vertices of the shapes. So we can make some interesting shapes just based off of those. And then the depth of the object and then radius top. So this, since this is a cone, we can control those two things, radius bottom, which is the center. And then we have the rotation. One thing you'll note on all the objects, pretty much all the objects, there is this ground offset. So this is basically taking the max uh, Z dimension and it's always putting it on the floor if it's at one, if it's at zero, if we go under the floor, you can see that it's always gonna be touching the floor on the negative side. So we wanna set that usually to one just so it's always sitting above ground, but for whatever reason, if you wanna just set it to zero, this will just kind of be centered aligned. Okay, so now that we have that, um, so the ground offset is pretty cool because we can always rotate the object and it's always gonna be touching the floor. So no matter what we do with it, we can uh, always have a little fun with that. And then as you can see, we have materials. So there's just some custom, custom materials right now. And we can set those to whatever we want. Uh, it comes default with two materials and you're free to add whatever materials you like. So if we wanted to add a new object, we are going to just simply find what we want. Let's experiment with this one and add it. So for some reason, the uh, object is added one meter above the floor, which we don't want. And this is our new object. So let's go over to the panel and see what we got here. So we have our thickness. Okay, cool. We got our vertices of our donut. So if we just want a regular donut or we can make it however we want. The resolution is basically the, the bands, the resolution of the bands around the side. The slice angle will control how we want it sliced. And then we have the materials and then also the rotation. So we can have it rotated however we want. So why don't we explore something else, something a little more advanced. Let's choose, I guess, one of, the, yeah, one of these fractals right here. So we'll set this to zero so it's grounded. And we can see that this is a cube which has cubes on it and that has cubes on that and cubes on that. So it's kind of a fractal. So it's just kind of an iteration of that. And so you can see that we have a lot more uh, little sliders that we can adjust here. So we can adjust the vertices on the base cube, also the base size. So we can kind of change this however we want. And then we can also change the tier level. So tier one, we can change the X and the Y and the Z of that. And then we can change tier level two. So we can kind of create some interesting abstract looking shapes. And then we have the control over tier three. So these things are always rotatable and we can always kind of put it on the ground wherever we want. Okay, let's find another shape. Let's go with one of the arrays. Arrays are kind of cool. So we're just gonna set that to one. And now let's uh, rotate this on the X. And just, so here we go, we got it right there. And now what we wanna do is Let's change the depth of this shape. 
Okay, and then the, the radius of the array itself. Cool. Uh, let's add some more. There we go. Actually, I don't like this depth. I'll just keep it at one. And then let's change the inner radius of those stars and the outer radius. So yeah, you can see that we're making some kind of interesting abstract shapes here. Nice. And then star vertices. We can change the amount of vertices in each of those arrayed stars. And we can kind of change the rotation. It. So some interesting things right there. Let's see another shape. One that I think are pretty cool are the vases. So, so we have the vase here, and what we can do is you know change the the def deformation. So just how it um, deforms, grows, or actually no, this is the height of it, and then this is how we can actually have it kind of grow from the ground. Woo! So if you want to do a cool animation, that's how you do it. So these vertices control kind of the vertices of the base cylinder. It's basically a cylinder that's been deformed. And then the side segments is kind of the resolution of that. So the higher we go, the more kind of detail we can have on our base. And the thing about these vases, unfortunately right now at least, you can't really edit the vase shape within the geometry nodes panel. But if you go into the geometry nodes kind of editor tree, the node tree, we can then start to adjust this vase and we can have it be however we want so I have 20 side segments let's just bump that up to 250 just so it's nice and crisp so that's cool so we can add all the design that we want and we have this cool looking vase so if we go to the bool I always recommend to do this after you're done kind of editing it because it's a bool and it can kind of be a little taxing on your machine so if it's at zero, it's not going to bool, but if it's at one, it is going to bool. Okay, so we can see that we have a nice kind of hollowed out um, base, and then we can control the thickness of that side. But yeah, that is this cool looking base. All right, the last shape I'm going to show you before you can go get this and play with it yourself it is the fragment sphere so there's several fragments so basically this is a sphere that has been kind of separated their geometry is separated um, so we can kind of control some of this face separation with this slider right here so if i slide that we can separate that and you could put maybe a light in there if you wanted to and you also can turn off the fill so if we want to just have it hollow, have it be kind of more like a wireframe, we could do that. And then obviously you can change the wire thickness and radius. And then if we wanted to kind of subdivide the, uh, the base sphere that it's based off of, we can do that as well. So some cool things you can make with this for sure. All the shapes that you see here are included in GeoShapes and there will be more added in the future. These are all usable within the Asset Browser so you can bring them into any Blender file, any scene, and you can get right up and going making some interesting shapes whether you're making still lifes or you're just making some compositions for your scene. You can see that we have a, a large variety of different things to play with whether it's ladders or text over here. Ooh, or we got some cool knots that we can play with as well and make some cool abstract shapes. We got some arrays and steps, snowflakes, beautiful. So there's lots of things to play with, great value, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I have been enjoying making them. A lot more to come, and uh, thank you so much.